Good morning and welcome back to Sun Up on 7. Guys, I just... We need for doing a special for behind the scenes. Just so, I don't know, we kind of mm. oxtail Renata with a choke pun just uh -oh. now. <laughs> one, one, fake oxtail or a wish oxtail. I don't know which one. But it had a cough up in the background. <laughs> but we're moving to our next conversation and why the topic of oxtail came out. We have a student here with us, Miss Halle Spence, who is in the Caribbean School of Architecture located in Jamaica. And she's talking about her experience studying abroad in a male-dominated field of architecture and why it's important for youths to get exposure. So we would like to welcome you to our couch, Miss Spence. Good morning. I know you never you know, you ask good enough to call it that, but... I mean, you got the name correct the first right. time, it's so I'm so Ms. proud. Spence song, Ms. you know, official, right? Papa, you don't know a jacket man as well. So. I know, I had to, I had to. So, uh, How are you doing this morning, I'm Ali? doing good, you guys. Welcome me. Thank you, thank you. All right, great. You're not nervous or nothing? Ask me the first question, I will ask you. Let's go. <laughs> so, first question, we're going to start off from the beginning. Right? Okay. So why choose architecture? Because again, we know that many people off the fence would just normally say it's very male dominated. Women, yes. you know, so much women that, but I mean, no. think times are changing. Definitely. However, in the beginning when you did start your degree, I, I think it was much more male dominated then as compared. And I believe you started in UB. So could you tell us yes. about that experience as well, you know, starting off surrounding with so much man and probably maybe the negative connotations where they're like, oh, sister, really? what you would do today? Yes, like, yes. Um, this is not your place. <laughs> well, anytime I'm asked that question, like I always have to take it back, give some context because, um, you know, with the male dominated aspect of it all, I believe that from a young age, I was always fond of or like drawn towards male dominated activities, you know, because I don't know if you remember, but in high school, like I was a female athlete. You know, and it wasn't just um, regular basketball or anything. Like, I did karate. I fought with men and I enjoyed every minute of it. And I had that passion. And so for a long time, I had, I found no, no bad negative reason why I shouldn't be doing it because I enjoyed it. And so I tried to, well, when I was transi transitioning into school, like, it was the same passion, it was the same drive. Um, I was always crafty, artsy, hands-on with stuff, and so I tried to translate that into a career. And so did some research and I realized engineering, architectural engineering, like that has a lot of hand drawing as well as designing creativity. And so that was, that seemed like the perfect um, field of study for me. And so move it, but moving into UB, because St. Catherine Academy did not do any kind of engineering whatsoever. No, honey, boy. And I'm so that so. transition... There wasn't, yes. there wasn't technical drawing or no, anything? There no, there was none technical of that drawing there. at all. No. You see, no. and this goes back to our conversation that Kevin and I had yesterday with the gender, um, the gender equated fields. Yeah. Whereas in SJC, we had technical mm -hmm. drafting, we no, no, had... No, no, um, EP York as well. EP York has... Yeah. Yeah. I, I, does Palote have it? No, I don't. No, I don't they think so. They have textile and other stuff there. Mm -hmm. But I had to do a crash course before I went to UB in technical drawing just to get myself acquainted with what I wanted to do because I, had, I studied nothing, nothing that associated with engineering at all at SCA. And so, but I knew that I had that raw talent. And so I tried to level up. And when I got to UB, I was one of one of the four or five females in my class surrounded by 20, 25 plus men. Wow. And they did technical drawing. And so it was very intimidating at first, super intimidating. But, you know, I was thankful that I, I did my due diligence and I made sure that I had that, that one thing. And so when I got there, you know, I worked hard and I made sure that I did everything that I could, but also added my creativity, my flavor, my zest to everything that I tried to do. <laughs> And, you know, moving into university at Jamaica, um, yeah, there were less females, but there were more than compared to UB. And so I felt, I felt better going there, but at the same time, I was an international student. And so surrounded by Jamaicans. Also, you with only Jamaicans. I, yes, I a lot of Jamaicans. Oh. And even the internationals from different islands, St. Lucia, Trinidad, and what's not, you know, they were males. They were males. And so I was the only Belizean female. Oh, wow. Okay starting um, the Caribbean School of Architecture. And so that was a whole new ball game as well. And so that took some adjusting and what's not. But you know, when you're passionate about something, you just try to 
roll with the punches. But was there any feedback? And you know, being surrounded with all these men, yeah. um, was it like they tried to intimidate you? It was or very they, intimidating. Did they tell you anything? I mean, no, but like it's indirect, you know, because uh. when we get tasks, when we get projects and what's not, like they expect some some pretty drawings, you know, what's not. They don't they don't think we have that technical. They want you draw like flowers on your expertise. They want you draw flowers on your design. Yeah, show, they like want me. Thing. They want no. to do some pretty. No, 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 no. I can do the exact same thing you're doing, and I and can I, I can make it look pretty. Like, I can imagine me, as a, as a woman, you. In, in your experience, mm -hmm. you, did you feel like you have to, to prove yourself to them? Definitely, yeah. always. But at the same time, I think, it's, I think you have to have confidence in yourself first. Because and with, me, with me personally, I get a, I don't know, I get a thrill from proving people wrong sometimes. Mm -hmm. Just because they, they try to intimidate you and they try to, um, you know, you know, like I don't, I don't, I don't appreciate it, and and so whenever like I'm rewarded or or you know rewarded for things that I do, um, it's very reassuring, and you know I, I enjoy that feeling because it's Keeps not only going. yeah it's not only right. about the projects or what's not it's about what people are saying, what people are thinking. You so. know, the success also, you know, it kind of opens and breaks barriers too for other women too. So mm -hmm. they know we are here. We mm -hmm. are at the table where they make things happen. Mm -hmm. You mentioned something very interesting and I'm hoping like people that are outside maybe thinking about doing architecture, any male-dominated field and might face that same challenge where you're the only Belizean in the class and the only female in the class from Belize, right? Yeah. And so... What is that like on your mind? Because I know you said how that pushed you to work harder, but what are the things that you think really helped to make you get into the mindset that I don't have a, like a Belizean support system like that? Mm -hmm. Because I'm thinking about other people outside that want to get exposure and the importance of actually getting the exposure, but understanding with that exposure comes a lot of challenges in that mix. Yeah. So how can people, why, first of all, why should they get the exposure, regardless of that, and then how, when getting the exposure, can they maneuver these challenges, these hard challenges, being the only one sometimes? Yeah, well, um, with me personally, I can only speak personally. Um, I remember my um, lecturers from UB, they always ask me every year to come back and talk the same, talk about the same things, you know, the brand new females that are coming in to do the same architecture program. And I always tell them that you have to, first you have to sit with yourself and think about, you know, if this is really what you want to do, because I'm sure they've seen, they, they, women have been bullied, like bullying is a thing and it, it extends into your career into everything you do and so you have to sit and do your research think about what you really want to do and then pursue pursue it you have to have some self-confidence and you always have to um rely on well not rely on but have a support system have people to talk to and just try not to do things by yourself always educate yourself um me i have i have my family i have my friends and yes i was in jamaica on my own, but I wasn't on my own. You know, I had my right. family, I had my parents, uh, and I made friends over there. I, I tried, I stayed humble, and I always, you know, I always ask questions because there are always people that know more than me, and so I asked questions, and I, I wasn't afraid to fail. You know, I accepted failure, and I, I keep telling them that you're not going to, um, you're not going to get it on the first try. You're not going to win an award the first year. But you know you're going. You have to stay persistent, stay determined, stay disciplined, and just um, you know keep the faith. Good, good vibes all the time. <laughs> In terms of uh, exposure, mm -hmm. how how do you see the importance of that um, going or? Why why is it important for the youths to get exposure in like these types of ways? Well, um, Belize is small. And with well, my field of <laughs> with my field of study, you know, engineering, it's technological, and te technology is increasing. It's becoming um, a priority, and so getting getting international exposure helps you to bring back that information back home because that only helps with the development of this country. And so, for us to you have to want that for the country as well because we are a representation of Belize, and 
Belize can't progress without getting that, um, getting that exposure. And so going out, learning, and just experiencing what it's like, what, what, what's more, what's there outside, bringing it back. I, I, I yeah. truly appreciate You're going to that. appreciate it. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been an advocate for that, for people to travel, because once you travel outside, mm -hmm. once you see what's outside, you develop a greater appreciation mm -hmm. of what we have here in our country, not only what we have here in our country, but what's outside mm -hmm. of the box. Open up our minds a bit. Yeah. And what we lack as well. Yes. Yeah. So it brings you innovation, or just to look and see the models that the other countries are putting out mm -hmm. and what can be able to be applied in Belize. Mm -hmm. Like, you know something? We could do that, but we just have to put a little twist on it because the way how that set up, it can't work that way. Yeah. But it really does open the horizons of your mind to say, we can do this, but the appreciation, that the our thing too mm -hmm. as well. Because a lot of times, I think Belizeans, young young people don't appreciate Belize as well sometimes, I yeah. think. I yes, think definitely. they take it for granted, the privileges that we have as compared definitely. to other countries. And then some people, unfortunately, don't in Belize don't have the, the capacity to even travel within their own country to see what's life like, let's say, in the Mayan community, in the Garifuna community. Mm -hmm. Of course, they are find out find one way for Richard Tetamal, but um, they <laughs> don't, don't even know what's paperboard. life like in San Pedro <laughs> or things like that. So the exposure, yes, definitely. I can yeah, and can also, um, just to stick up in, but the exposure made me realize, like I said it before, what we lack because I get in my car every day and I drive down the street and I, being in the field that, I, that I'm in, you don't see buildings, you don't see areas, landscapes the same anymore. Like, you see a house and I see, you know, zinc to drop off at the top and, and you know, That's like how, 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 how could it have been um, improved or how could it have been, have been built or designed differently? <laughs> it's and so funny so, that you say that yeah. about like in law school and you're watching cartoons and I say, oh my gosh, or you're watching movies or shows and you're like, that's illegal. No, you yeah. can sue for this. <laughs> what? Yeah, you, I figure, out, no, I you figure out how to, how to improve and you know, what to, what to bring new bring fresh ideas. We need fresh ideas and yes. it's young people like us, females like us, that can can make that change. That is this to switch up, you know. That's the lead. Yes, that's a new one. Okay. I don't know how you spell that though, a song, okay? Don't go on, song. Your voice, no, that one to people, you know, spell that one out because I don't know what they are saying. So as we're wrapping up this segment, I want to ask for your two cents to make one dollar in the sense of saying, what do we need in Belize when it comes to architecture? You say you, you see things out there, right? You got that exposure, honey bun. You win you know, a whole award, all these other things here. I'm still studying, you know. You're still, still. studying. So tell me when we study and tell me what do you think Belize specifically, in a nutshell, would be able to apply to our country to be better when it comes to our, our architecture? Well, as we said before, you know, traveling, experiencing what is out there, what the potential, the potential that we have for development. And so doing, doing research, finding new discoveries, and you know, just, I think it's the mentality because architecture and design starts from conceptualization, you know, what's in our mind, because what, what's in our mind is what's being produced from conception, con right. conception, conceptual, conceptualization. Mm -hmm. So construction, you know, we're the ones that tell you what to build. All these buildings are are from someone's you know someone's thought. Someone had to think it. Right. And so there is the first place that we need to start. So getting outside, uh, Google Maps. Google Maps. You could. I could be in Russia right now. I could be in Brazil. I could be in Rio. Like I could walking be anywhere. Down the street, walking down the street yeah. on your computer. You don't have to hop on a plane and do it. Like it's technology is amazing, and so it's so easy to see what's out there. Because it starts, it starts from your mind, really and truly. So change that mind, go mind research, Google it out, and get that exposure in any way possible because mm -hmm. your mind is constantly growing, you're constantly evolving, just like the world is. So you need to get with the program. Yes. So I want to say thank you so much for taking yes, time to be here, you. Chica. Thank I know you can't wait to go back to Jamaica. Her, Definitely. Her. And so... <laughs>
and I get ox tail and all of this stuff there. And I, I know I said, well, I'm going to on the commercial break. <laughs> but with that, we go to our next commercial break. And when we are back, we're going to be keeping on the female empowerment. We'd end off with a bang, guys. We have a Shiro awardee here, Miss Grace Flowers, to be able to talk about the award and her, what, why she got her award. So let's highlight her and give the big ups and all the things to our amazing women in society. Stay tuned for that exciting conversation. We'll be right back.